Hello, hello, hello. Finally alive. Been a while. Been a while since I last did a live. Let's see how this thing works again. Because I honestly forgot. I think we're live. Yes, it says we're live. So let's wait for a couple of people to show up and then we're going to kick in this uh, Ask Mo Anything from Roma. From Roma. From Roma. So it's going to be uh, half Italian, half English, half Spanish. So that makes it 1.5 now, not one anymore. And yes. Okay. Hello. 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 Like people tag people and shake. Oh, that's the wave now they do on Facebook. Nice. Nice. What's up, Jose? What's up? All right. Bella Italia. Bella Italia. Si, signore. Si. Yeah, here in one more week, I'm going to start speaking Italian. Food is good, though. Food is freaking good. It's on point. They live on carbs. Pasta, uh, spaghetti, all type of pastas. Pizza, all type of pizza. Then you go to Spain, you have the paella. France, they have like all the baguette and croissant. I know, no time for the gym, no time to lose weight. I'm telling you, like living in Europe, I know how these guys are not fat. All right, now let's get serious. Hello, Isabel, hello. I'm, I'm following the things here. Okay, so. What's the live about? It's about nothing. It's uh, you ask your questions, I get them answered, and that's uh, pretty much it. That's all. Been a while since I did the live, so I thought, why not? Why not get some good internet connection in this hotel? Mo, does money make happiness? That's uh, that's a very good question. Does money make happiness? No, no, it does not. But it definitely. Happiness, I would say. Uh, less stress. We live in a world where 90% of our stress, 90% of it is directly related to financial freedom or financial problems. Uh, so if you got money, trust me, you don't have any problems anymore. You just have checks to sign, man. You just pay the bill and that's it. But uh, does money make you happy? I don't know. Travel makes you happy? Yes, it does. It makes me happy. But to travel, you need money. Uh, does, uh, I don't know, traveling, uh, like taking your family, spending time with your family makes you happy? Yes, it does. But to be able to spend time with your family and not, being, and not going to work, you need money. So does money make you happy? Directly, no. But it damn sure makes the way for happiness. Okay. Uh, do you recommend free shipping when drop shipping? Uh, it works. Also, paid shipping works. We even use uh, paid shipping as a order bump, as an upsell, if you may want to call it that. So both of them, both of them work. And here, excuse me, it's 11.30 at night, so if I, and I run a two hours webinar, so I'm a little bit tired. How much you need to make $1 million per year? Literally about like $500 if you have a winning product. If you have a winning product, you, hey, you will need like 500 bucks, and then all the money that you make, you reinvest back, and then you keep going, reinvesting, 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 reinvesting. But the problem, that you see with the guys, if they find their first winner, they make their first 100 grand, and then all of a sudden, they start becoming like the, the, the whole brand's ambassadors. Gucci this, Versace that, uh, do this brand, do that brand, and you're like spending the money business and shit that doesn't impress anyone anymore. If it was the 1990s, I get you. All about brand, do that. But I mean, we're 2018, man. Like, no one buy those brands, more or less, like the, the people with their brain anymore. Like, people now, at least the millennial generation, are going into the brands with the story behind them. Like, the Gucci and all that. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, the, if you want to make a million dollars, reinvest into your business. 90% goes into your business, 10% go have fun with it. Including your rent and food and car and planes and all that crap. But, uh, yeah, uh, how much you need to make a million dollars a year? 
right? Five hundred to a thousand dollar if you have a winning product and a winning funnels. The idea, it's all like ninety percent of it is in your damn brain, where you need to invest, reinvest ninety percent, if not all of your money, into your business. Okay, let's see. Uh, when you do scaling by ad account, do you use the old post or do you use the new one? Usually I start with the old post and I start retargeting with retargeting when I start uh, a new uh, account or step, start scaling with another account. Hi, Mohammed. Amazing presentation at the AWA. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. AWE, sorry. Thank you. I appreciate you, Marcello, for being there. Arigato. Thank you. Grazie. Grazie. Grazie, signor. Hello, Mo. Hello. Hello. Okay, is $150 a month to spend on Facebook ads sounds enough for a beginner? Dude, here's the thing, like it's not rocket science, right? If you are in the US or if you are in Canada or if you are I think in Australia, even in Canada it doesn't work, but let's say your payout is like with Shopify is three to seven days if you are in the tier one countries, correct? So you take that 150, you start spending it and then the money will start coming every seven days. So the first like two, three weeks is gonna be a little bit hard then the money will start coming back into your business and then you reinvest that in, back into your ads and life goes on. The idea is not, you know, but like it, it's not hard. You just, you know, reinvest into your business. Reinvest into your business. Money comes into your business goes back into your business. Now, I get it, you have money to spend for uh, uh, for suppliers, you have money to spend for employees, you have money to spend for this, you have money to spend for that, but in the beginning, like you don't need all that fancy stuff, or you don't need like 17 employees because some guru told you, oh, don't spend time to do the $5 job. Well, guess what? Your time ain't worth more than $5, so you shut up and you do the $5 job until you start strategizing and you become a real CEO and then you stop doing the $5 job. But then again, it's all in your head, in your head. It's all in your head. So yeah, so again, invest into your business. Okay, when testing, man, if I get a dollar every time someone asks me this question. When testing, what is your daily budget per ad set? $30, $30, $30. And I launch like three or four of them, sometimes five, depends. And depends if we have like custom audiences from previous uh, from previous products. Like we have any assets like email or custom audiences or pixel data or whatever it is from previous launches that we did. <sighs> okay, uh, let's see. How do you hire a team? For example, a project manager, when fire or hold the person? If they suck, you fire them, dude. I, I am not big on second chances when it comes to work. That's my money they're spending. Uh, but the thing is, there are mistakes that you can take, and there are mistakes that are just plain it will not work. Like, listen, there are mistakes that maybe you forgot to tell them, it's not part of the training, they didn't know, they used to do it that way before, all right, we correct it. But then again, if they do the same mistake again, that's when I lose my shit. That's when I'm like, you're gone. Also, you want uh, you want to have like KPIs with people. You want to, you know, like, okay, you're working four hours today, this is what should take four hours, it should not take three days to be done. So, yeah. If they are not up to the, your standards, fire them. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? Like, you need to fire people. It's I know it's hard and heartbreaking and all that, but if they are not up, you think like people who work with Elon Musk, like go read the blogs about the, the horror story of people working with Elon Musk, but then there is that other breed of people who will kill to work with him. Like you want it to be the best in the world, you need to be, have the best in the world working with you. As easy as that. You want to be that, that whole emotional, oh, and he has kids and a family and all that, then have an average business. And that's it. That's how it works. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Menju MHD. Listen, buddy, uh, this is uh, not a spamming board. So please ask your, uh, a question once. I don't need to read it seven times by now. Eight. So I'll get back to that question. You wait. Okay. Do you need an amazing beard like yours to crush Ecom? Definitely, man. 100%, dude. 100% we're seeing, brother. You need that. Or you cannot crush Ecom. That's the secret to Facebook ads. 
Uh, I think all the guys who don't, who are not, who are not working in building a brand, they will withdraw before 2020. What's your opinion? Well, Daily Lama, uh, I guess you can see the future. I don't know, man. I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow morning. So I don't know what will happen by 2020. Uh, you basically just what you did is you killed the whole performance marketing side of business. Thank you for that. I'm now depressed and I'm going to end the live. I'm joking. But uh, yeah, brand building does actually help. Brand equity does help. But then to say if you don't own a brand, but then again, a brand, what's a brand? Like the definition of brand. Some The performance marketers, ooh, we hate the brand. And I was reading this by a great copywriter not long ago. It's the positioning, how we position our products or how we position our brands. And then most of you own a single product with a damn label and a logo on it and call it a brand with all the audacity in the world. I own a brand. No, you dumbass. You don't own a brand. You own something thing with a logo in it you own a private labeled product you don't own a brand so what's a brand the moment you stop your ads no one no one is buying from you if you stop your ads no one is advocating your brand when you stop your ads no one thinking about you when you stop your ads no one is googling you when you stop your ads and then you come oh I own a brand no you don't know what I mean like first of all let's get back uh, let's understand what a brand is then we learn how to build a brand and then let's we talk, talk about 2020 for now, let's finish 2018. We still have Q4. Uh, Dimitris will be here in Morocco. I don't know, man. He asked me to be his uh, assistant to book his flights. I said no, so I have no idea if Dimitris will be in Morocco or not. I hope he will. But honestly, I don't share his calendar, so... Okay, let's see. What else? Uh, na, 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 na. Am I coming to Morocco? Uh, yes and no. I don't know yet. I'm not sure. Some stuff came up this week. So technically, originally, I am. So we will see if I will still be. I'm working on some stuff. and I'm building an office in Montreal so we will see we will mark it as a work in progress for now so far I am but that may change next week may may doesn't mean well it may change next week okay next one uh, lots of link clicks but no sales what to do harder at prayers man that's what you do you fix your landing page and pray more and fix your landing page. Uh, you want to fix your landing page. Something is wrong. Like if people are clicking on your ads and going to your landing page, something is wrong in your landing page. It can be anything. It can be your, you know, your product copy, your title, your product images, your loading time, your add to cart button not working, the positioning, the angle you're taking, and so on and so forth. So look into all of these, install Hotjar, watch your recordings, and then figure out the patterns that people are doing in your page and basically fix whatever needs to be fixed there. Also depends on what type of ad you're running. Usually, if people are uh, are like coming from a WC ad and you are, they are not like from a website conversion ad and they are not converting. Like ninety nine point ninety nine percent chances that the problem is in within your page, not the ad. Which is the most powerful emotion in copy for you? That's a good one. Happiness, sadness. Sadness is good. Sadness is good and fixing a problem is good. Like coming as the hero. I love giving my product as the solution to all their problems and their miserable lives. Buy this and your life will change forever. But you don't say it like that. You make it feel like that's what it is. And that's how we sell. Uh... Not the question. Well, wishes and hope you are have a good trip. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, someone. Thank you. Thank you. Mucho gracias. Thank you very much. Grazie. Grazie. For example, when we talk about luxury watches, we hear Rolex, Hublot, Richard Mill. Okay. That's all brands in watches niche. So building a brand for a specific niche like that is the future. Yeah, there is also movement watches, which was built by people like us. Mm-hmm. 
It's what was more or less also performance marketing. There is the Filippo Loretti that I posted about in my group, in my uh, Facebook page actually, my Facebook profile, which is uh, which a brand more or less that did by now I think twenty five million dollars just selling watches with upsells and downsells and all that good stuff and one click upsells and funnels. You, you do you want you, can you like does it help to build a brand like a niche brand? Absolutely, hundred percent. But then again, let's define what the brand is. Know what I mean? A brand is not a product with a damn label on it. Period. Okay. How to know if it's a winner or not? You flip a coin. So it's if it's uh, if it's face, it's a winner. Anything else is not. Basically, what you want is consistency. I'm sorry, I'm goofing around. I'm just having fun with you guys. Yeah, I mean, some of the questions are like, uh, how to know it's a winner? You have sales. Consistent, consistent, let me repeat, consistent sales. You don't want one sale today, 17 tomorrow, five after tomorrow, then zero the next day. You want consistent sales, consistent sales. That's when you start scaling and you know you have a winner. <sighs> okay, next one. Thank you, Salah. Thank you. I appreciate you. Okay, uh, why ads stop delivering and spending their budget as they were? Uh, sometimes you're under a manual review. Sometimes the audience is too small. Sometimes Facebook is just being Facebook. So you just relaunch and life goes on. Thank you so much, bro. Best live each time ever. Thank you. Mwah. Grazie, 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 grazie. Peace, we'll see him. See you in Toronto, brother. Uh, what's next? What's next? Let me see these questions. Okay, so I'm a new. I started only with PayPal. Would that work? Uh, yes, yes, it does work. It's just I hate PayPal. But that does not mean do not use PayPal. I hate PayPal, but you can still use it. You don't need Stripe to start. When will you launch your uh, SaaS, bro? Soon, 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 soon. It's like almost done. I just, you know, I, I, it's my first SaaS, and I don't want to launch something that is half working. So you people don't start talking shit about me. That's how the industry goes. So I'm gonna launch something solid for an amazing price, and then you're gonna all love me some more. Yay, Italia, Italia, Italia. Okay. Next, is Shopify the best e-commerce platform? Um, oh, yes, what is it, this one? No, this one. They give me three t-shirts. So yes, they are the best platform. Shopify, hey, more t-shirts, please. I'm joking, they are a really solid platform, man. Like, I am not technical at all, so having Shopify to launch stores on the fly, it's, uh, it's amazing. And now, like, we have more apps on Shopify than any other platform, and the apps are built by marketers, so they're, like, useful apps. They're apps that you look and you're like, what will I do with this in my life? But then there are apps that are by marketers, and uh, they, they, man, they, they increase your business, they increase your numbers, they help your conversion, they help your AOV, your LTV, and so on. Okay, are you retargeting on Google? Yes. Uh, what else here? Mucho gracias, Beard Lazy Mo. Someone is calling me Beard Lazy Mo. I'll take that, I'll take it, I'll take it. Beard Lazimo, I'll take that. Uh, how aggressive are you with cross sales when using COD? What's COD? Cash on delivery? I don't do any cash on delivery. So I don't know. I really don't do any cash on delivery at all. Zero is let's nada. The best warehouse depends. It depends. There is no such thing as the best unless I'm creating something. That's the best. Just so we are clear on that. I'm joking. But I mean, warehouse, it depends. It depends on, uh, on, on what you need, man. There are warehouses that they have no minimum, but they're a little bit more expensive. There are warehouses that you need the minimum thing to, to move. So it really depends on what you need. Yeah, Morocco is not 100% sure yet as of today, so we will see. All right, did we do 30 minutes yet? No, not yet. 
Okay. Uh, thoughts on using Shopify for an expanded presence when you are already strong seller on Amazon FBA? Absolutely, dude. F FBA is like you know you know how FBA is. FBA man, it's like okay, your 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 neighbor owns the land, all right? Your neighbor owns the land, and then you go there and you go to tell your neighbor, hey neighbor, I'm gonna build my house in here, and your neighbor goes, be okay, build your house, and then you build your house, yada 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 yada, and then your neighbor comes like five years later, screw you, I want my land. Or better yet, what Amazon does now, I like your house. I'm just going to build 20 like it and sell them all. So that's how I feel about Amazon. You literally own drag shit. You don't own a damn thing on Amazon. Or what you do, they are renting you this space to sell on Amazon. And then once you start making money, once they know you're making money, either they're going to copy you or they're going to kick you out. And it happened. Like, read the, man, just Google Amazon copying people brands. And you read the horror stories. Seriously, and plus you have no data, you have nothing. You cannot run emails, you cannot run funnels, you can't run shit. Or what you, okay, the only plus about Amazon is that it's a marketplace and you have free traffic, great. Now you're making money on that. I'm not saying Amazon doesn't work, it does work and it works beautifully. But I am, I, I like control, I like control. I like to sleep at night, see that bed? See that bed right there in the hotel room? I like when I put my head on these pillows, I like to sleep. I like to not think about any damn thing. So me having my business on Amazon and then wake up next day, hey, Mo, you have been banned. Guess what? Because you're in Italy, you logged in into your Amazon account. Screw you. What the hell? You know what I mean? So if you have a brand that is working on Amazon, start your Shopify store, start your own funnel, start your traffic acquisition, start building something. Right? Okay. That's my rant about Amazon. I'm sorry. <sighs> Okay, when using manual bidding, do you have a preference between cap and target? To be honest with you, I tested them both. I tested them both and sometimes none of them work, sometimes one of them works, sometimes I see my friend doing something, I try to do it and it doesn't work. The complete opposite it works. My answer will be test both of them and see what works for you. Also, different bids, different bids. When you're doing manual bidding, you want to do different bids. Like test, I don't know, like $15 bids, $17, $20, $35, $60 bids. Because it gives you different audiences and one of them usually works. Uh, okay. I have over 120K sales. That's in sales, I guess, $120,000 in two months. Should I move from AliExpress to direct uh, procurement? What fulfillment service do you recommend? Uh, it depends what your product is, depends on the type of the volume. So it's not just like one cut. That's the thing. Like you need to be shopping around, literally for warehouses. You need to be shopping around unless one day I create my own warehouse, then I will give you whatever you want. But that's uh, that's not the, the main thing now. You need to be shopping for warehouses and see what suits you best. Should you be for sourcing your own product? Absolutely, 100% you should be sourcing your own product because you will be saving money on the product cost. If you're doing like a thousand units a day and you save 50 cents per day, uh, 50 cents per unit, that's $500 cash every day, $500 cash every day so you know what i mean like if you if you're doing 10 percent profit on your business you need to sell five thousand dollars to keep that five hundred dollar cash in your bank account at the end of the day i know 50 cents doesn't doesn't sound a lot but when you do the whole compounding thing which is einstein called what did he call the eighth uh, eighth uh, wonder of the world compound right so when you do that you actually uh, make a lot more money easier. All what you do is probably a phone call or an email call or you go through the process of sourcing your product and you sit on a lot more cash. So should you source your product? Absolutely. Next question. <sighs> do you prefer now Shopify to dedicated landing with Optimized Press? I never, I never, I, I use them both. I don't prefer one over the other. Both have their own places and both have their own part of the whole, like the, 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 the big spectrum of the, of the business. So one is for more like customer acquisition, the other one for the whole branding and back end and building shopping cart and social, uh, what do you call them, social uh, assets and all that. It's hard to build a brand on a funnel. It is hard. So basically you need the Shopify, you need the shopping card, you need people to find you, you need people to shop around, you need people to share, etc. So customer acquisition is one thing, 
And the branding is another thing. Okay. Yo, Nishad, what's up, brother? Welcome back to Facebook. Welcome back. Welcome back. <sighs> Dude, you just convinced me to close my seller central account. Oh, God. I, I never said that. I never said that. I never said that. If your Amazon business is working, add to it. In addition, in plus, in surplus, add to it. Don't close it. Add to it. Plus sign. Add to it. Please. Dave, my man. How are you? Okay. Do ad sets with smaller budget perform better than ad sets with larger budget when scaling? Not necessarily true. Basically, do you recommend increasing the budget for a good performing ad set or splitting one to multiple ad set by age? Both of them do work. It's just one thing. Whatever an ad set is working, do not touch it. If an ad set is working, do not touch it. And then do the, everything in the rest basically works. Increasing incrementally, doubling the budget, going big budgets from the beginning, uh, split like the, splitting the placement and ages and all that, all of that works. Okay. What is your average CTR on lookalike audiences? Five, six percent link CTR. It all comes down to the copy and to your creative if you're doing lookalike audience because technically your lookalike audience is not really that cold of traffic. So yeah. Okay, local fulfillment seems to be expensive. Some fulfillment centers charge more for each variant than they charge in the bulk delivery. Yep, I know. To offset these costs, they require the uh, bulk order is too much. My orders per day are about 15 to 20, and I'm making good profit. Like this direction, we're going to express any advice. You need to find maybe you need to talk with your supplier on AliExpress if they have a warehouse and you can deal with them, or you need to maybe to find the fulfillment house directly from China. You don't need to go to the US route. Do you think click funnels is better than Zipify for Shopify? Uh, for cold traffic, absolutely, because you're sending people to a real landing page that is optimized for uh, converting people into customers. Shopify, after all, is a, like the product page on Shopify is not a landing page. Per se. Well, per definition, it is a landing page, but it's not optimizing for like it's not optimized for performance marketer. Uh, it's not optimized to convert your your customer as much as you want them to. I mean, like you can get maybe up to nine, ten percent, but you'll never get the twenty. Oops, the twenty, thirty percent uh, conversion rate that you may or may not get on follows. So, uh, landing pages, like proper landing pages, are the way to go. I believe, in my honest and humble opinion, uh, are the way to go for uh, customer acquisition. Then after that, everything can happen can happen with Shopify and Zipify. So it, it's not better or worse. It's the right tool for the right place in the funnel. How do you schedule your day? Working hours, sleeping hours. Right now, <laughs> I don't even have a schedule. I just wake up and I do stuff. I'm on vacation. But usually it's uh, gym in the morning, then food, then go back to work, then food, then back to work, then food, then back to work. That's my life. That's my life. That's my life. Okay, can we rely on ClickFunnels only some products without using Shopify? Not, you cannot, because their fulfillment part sucks. ClickFunnels uh, logistics sucks. So you will need still a Shopify store to send your orders from ClickFunnels to Shopify. Do we have any more question? And by the way, guys, a, a quick question because here I got a lot of people asking me, uh, do you like the, the, the lives when I do lives? Do you want me to keep them real? Like I'm doing right now and telling the, you things as they are or do you want me to sugarcoat stuff? Because they can literally sugarcoat stuff. I'm a marketer after all. I would be like, yes, I think uh, ClickFunnels is a powerful tool and then I drop you my affiliate link. And uh, Shopify works in conjunction with uh, ClickFunnels, then I drop you my other affiliate links. And uh, I think you can do it. You just got to believe in yourself and uh, follow whatever advice you have to do and all that crap. So please tell me in the comments which one yeah, do you prefer. Do you want, it, do you want me uh, to keep it real or do you want me to, uh, to do uh, the whole other make you feel better about yourself part? 
How is Italy? Italy is beautiful, my friend. Italy, Italy, bellissimo, Italy. Italy is, uh, is amazing. Italy is amazing and uh, the food is good. That's all I care about, the food. <laughs> the scenery is amazing. The history is on point. That Roman Empire was an empire. I mean, damn, the country is amazing. Oh, I love your lives. Yeah, be real. That's part about you. No, keep it original. Good. I have like 90 people watching. I have two people answering. The rest, they have no opinion. Oh, Lord. <sighs> Makes me sad. People, it's 2018. You have the freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. Just keep it real. Oh, and I got the grammar, Nazi. Bellissima. Do I look Italian, man? I'm putting an effort here speaking foreign language. Leave me alone, for God's sake. All right, people. So we hit the 30 minutes mark, 31 minutes. Your monthly revenue, what's the breakup? I mean, Shopify versus funnel versus email versus others. <laughs> Yuck, YouTube. Uh, I have no idea, honestly. I would have to check the numbers. Even if I don't, if I know, I won't tell you right now. Seriously. It's 12 in the, like, it's midnight. It's midnight. You don't ask these type of questions at midnight. I need to sleep. All right, so everyone is at the keep it real point. Thank you for that. So more yelling, more swearing. More uh, tough love, sorry. Your content is high value as it is, bro. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Great. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for that. Keep it real. Everyone want me to keep it real. All right, great. More tough love for you guys. More tough love. I know I love you, and I want your, your good being. But then, you're going to be me then. So you put the work on. All right. That's it for tonight. I'm going to hit the sack. I'm that tired. And uh, tomorrow is a long day, plus I'm recording tomorrow, so may God be with me, that boring stuff. And, uh, okay, let's see. Uh, every time I say I'm going to end the live, everyone has like that last time question, you know, like last minute question, let's ask the question. Okay. Is free plus shipping still working well? Yes, it is, but it, again, it has the right time and place in the funnel. Uh, would you recommend Stripe Atlas for registering an online business outside of the U.S.? I would ask my accountant what are the implications of owning a, a business in the U.S. when you are not American. I know when you own a business in the U.S., even if you are a foreigner, you still need to pay your taxes within the United States of America so they can build more roads and do more good to people and democracy and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, you have to pay your taxes in the U.S. if you own a business in the U.S. So if you don't live in the U.S., I don't know why you want to open a business in the US. What made you successful? Chocolate. Dude, what do you think made me successful? This is like, you know, this is I saw, uh, I saw a video by Fred Kern earlier uh, this week. And uh, basically he got, uh, he got sick, you know, high blood pressure, a lot of fat and everything. It's the same question people ask. Well, how did you lose, uh, lose weight uh, so fast? So what happened to Frank Kern, you know, he was Googling online. He was Googling how to lose fat first, uh, how to lose fat fast and everything. Right? like the quickest hack, the fastest way to do it. And then he went to the doctor and guess what the doctor told him? The secret that worked for him. Guess what it is? Good diet, working out. Good diet, working out. Same thing. What do you think made me successful? What's the secret? What is the secret that made me successful? Let's see. Let's choose between hard work and flipping a coin. There's also a lot of uh, meditation. Dude, how do you want to be successful? I mean, you just bust your ass off, you put the work in, and that's pretty much it. You go out there, you show up when you need to show up, you meet the right people, you ask the right questions, you educate yourself, and you take action, 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 and then you focus, 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 up, focus some more, you shut down the noise around you, and you make shit happen. That's it. There is no secret to how you become successful. I started from nothing. I started with nothing. I didn't even speak the damn language that I'm speaking in right now. God, if I, 10 years ago, I would have like I would be on stage speaking in English or doing a live right now and being goofy as I am. 
it seemed impossible but then you put the work in you practice and you practice some more and then you become better at things and that's how you become uh, successful there is no secret no secret absolutely not zero how do i become a facebook master guru shopify master like you adrian you buy a jet my man you buy a jet and then that's it you can sell whatever you want you become a guru master shopify like you also i need to call you bro for real uh, i need some advice from you see that's another that's another secret to success asking for advice from the right people so there is a subject that adrian is a master in it he's better than me on that subject so i'm going to reach out to adrian to ask him a question that's another secret to success asking the right question and taking advice from someone who you want to be in life like someone if someone is successful i don't know doing real estate go ask that person if you want to go into real estate don't go ask a doctor how to make money because the doctor yes he's rich but he did not make his money with real estate know what i mean okay Steve Black, I use Zapier to push Amazon Seller Central orders to Google Sheet document. A little bit of data is useful for creating lookalikes for purchases. Definitely adding Shopify now. 100%, dude. Even in the beginning when you add your Shopify, like you can, Shopify integrates with Amazon. So your stock that is on Amazon, you can use that to ship your Shopify orders. So you don't even have to find new fulfillment. You don't have to do anything. And then you work on your numbers. If it doesn't make any more sense to have your stock, like your Shopify that the stock that you're selling on Shopify on Amazon, you just bring that to a cheaper warehouse. But in the beginning, to start and start fast, man, dirty and quick. That's how we do things. Dirty and quick. Let's do it fast. You want to progress. You don't want to be a perfectionist. You want to be a progressionist. It's all about the progress. Start the Shopify store. Link it to Amazon Sales Central. Start running your ads. You have already your lookalike audiences. Even run a retargeting campaign to put the purchasers and tell them, hey, we now we, thank you for being uh, an awesome customer on us on Amazon. We are launching our own store. You have been a customer of us. You love our product. Here is discount code. Bam, let them go buy it on your store. Why will they buy it on your store? Give them free gift, incentivize them to go buy in your store. Why? Because you want them, one, to get used to your store, two, leave these reviews, three, collect more data on them. And then there is the email sequences and all that. So incentivize that Shopify purchase uh, in your store, and then life is good, man. Life is good. All right. Did I win $100? No, I didn't. You did not win $100. You won my blessings, though. You are blessed, my son. You are blessed. Okay, <laughs> what's the average budget to test a new product? Anywhere between fifty to two hundred dollars depends. It really depends on your budget, man. Sometimes you start getting sales from the first thirty dollars. Sometimes you get sales at two hundred dollar mark. All right. Video mo, please will do. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate every one of you. I need to. And it's late in Italy. Italy, Italy. Oh my God, it's midnight. Okay. Thank you very much. I uh, I enjoyed doing this live. Been a while. Been a while. 